Welcome back everybody, thank you for watching another video. So tonight we're going to have a closer look at this beautiful kitchen knife from M Custo. Now if you haven't had a chance to check out the video I did on their folding knives, I'll leave a link for it right up here. But tonight it's all about this beautiful knife right here. But before getting started, I just want to give you five reasons why you might want one of these. It's nice. All right, here is what the box looks like. Beautiful black box with gold foil. All right, and again, here is the name of the company here, pronounced M Custa. It's a combination of two words, machine or man machine and customization. And that's really what the company is all about. It combines both machine, like CNC laser cutting, that's how they get the shape of their blades done. And they combine it with the old school craftsmanship of assembling the knives, polishing by hand. Zanmai, that's Japanese, English, it means luxury, and of course made in Seki, Japan. Now, if you don't know much about Seki, Japan, they literally have centuries upon centuries of making samurai swords and knives, and they just have the right natural resources there to make awesome blades. All right, moving on to the knife itself. So you have an overall length of about 15 inches. The blade length by itself is around nine and a half inches. So just to give you a size reference, here is a 12 inch ruler. Okay, put it right here. So about 15 inches. The height of the blade you're gonna see is just about, well, it's a little bit longer, a little bit more. Okay, a little bit higher than the ruler itself. If you're wondering about the handle, okay, handle coming in maybe about five inches here. I'll put it back to back, right up to the bolster. All right, let's have a look at the thickness of the spine here. Just how good is that taper? So we're gonna start here at the bolster and go all the way down here to the tip. And we can see that is, that is almost non-existent in the front there. And that's what really helps you get through that smooth meat like fish. So I would say that that right there is probably the same thickness as a nickel right down here at the bolster. And I'm just going to drop this so I don't kind of scratch up the that high polished blade. And you can see it's really high polished. Get that beautiful pattern on there. And down to the tip, I mean, normally I get down to around the size of a dime, but man, look at this. That it, it gets so incredibly thin. I'll just put that down at the point. Trying not to kill myself down there with that uh, edge. Uh, you can see that maybe right there is about the thickness of a dime, but toward the point. I mean, that is so incredibly thin. So incredibly thin. All right, let's do a weight reference. So a deck of cards, full deck of cards, coming in at 3.4 ounces. And the knife by itself, coming in at 5.6 ounces. So heavier than a deck of cards. All right, let's start off by talking about what type of style knife this is. Now, this is called a Sujihiki, very similar to Yanagi. Yanagi has uh, only a single edge on it, so it's more like a chisel grind. If you don't know what that is, here's my Japanese nata. This is a Japanese hatchet. You can see here that there's no edge on the other side. It's just on one side. And the reason this is useful is when you're trying to chop branches off a tree, you don't really want to harm the trunk of it. So you want to get as close to the tree as possible. Same thing when you're cutting sushi. You want to get as close to the meat as possible and make your cut. If there's a shoulder on this side, then the shoulder is going to be bumping against what you're trying to cut. And the cut won't be as optimal as possible. So that's why a Yanagi only has one edge, while Sujihiki has two edges, one on both sides. All right, here is the chef knife I've been using for years. This is a Shun Gyuto, and the reason I have it out here is I just want to show you the blade profile differences here. So you can see here that the chef knife is taller. There's more surface contact area here. And as we're going to see in a while, in a while the, the spine is a lot thicker. Now, chef knives are important. You have to have one in your kitchen. They're good all-around performers. But the one thing this doesn't do well is get through nice, soft, moist, sticky meat like fish meat nice boneless fish meat uh, so because of the thickness of the spine it's pretty much uniform all the way down to right about here so it stays thick all the way through and you have a larger surface area so as you're kind of going through that nice 
piece of fish meat, it ends up to be more of a sawing motion and you're really destroying the texture of the fish meat. And that's important because you really want that fish meat to just melt in your mouth with that first taste and taste as good as it can. But when you're just doing that sawing motion, you're really destroying the texture of that fish meat. Now on a Yanagi or Sujihiki, again, I'll show you, it just, it disappears right down there to the point. So thin, less surface area. So as you're making your draw cut, you really have a better chance of getting through in one cut. Maintaining that texture is so important. I promise you, it's just going to melt in your mouth and really maintain the best flavor as it can. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is only a nine and a half inch blade, 15 inches across this way. You know, if having one consistent cut all the way through is important, why don't you get a longer knife? Well, you absolutely can. It just depends on what you feel is comfortable in your hand and, of course, on your workspace. You don't want to have a giant lightsaber and not have the ability to kind of cut with it. So, again, a lot better for getting through that soft, moist, sticky meat. All right, I have to change my settings on my camera so I can pick up this crazy mirror polish on this blade. Just another great example of how that traditional craftsmanship is put on here with that hand polishing. And it's really polished all the way around from the spine, nice and polished and smooth, all the way down to the finger troll area. Rounded, no real sharp areas there. Comfortable in the hand. Let me switch back over to that side. We have a 33 layer VG10 Damascus core blade. Let me just show you the pattern on there. It just looks like a beautiful waterfall flowing right down to the tip of the knife there. You can see the VG10 core right here. And that's important to have that. Right, we got a 61 Rockwell Harding. So this is a very hard knife. And if it doesn't have the ability to flex, it can chip. And that's why having the softer stainless on the outside is important. It gives the knife a little bit more flexibility. Look at that. Gorgeous. Now, talking about the craftsmanship, let's have a look at the handle back here. Uh, you're going to notice that the center pin is replaced by this symbol or decorative art center pin replacer. It looks like a Japanese mon or family crest. You can see the beautiful black pack of wood handles. What really sets this off, though, uh, are these red rings by the bolster and to the rear of the handle here. It really matches that center pin design. Very unique. Nice little palm swell here, right in the middle. It's thicker here. Gets a little bit thinner here. A little bit of a cutout here for your pinky to rest on. So very comfortable grip when you're trying to do that hammer grip. You're rarely going to grip it like this. Most people are going to come up here and pinch grip it. Or kind of pistol grip it this way. But just well executed. Beautiful. Alright guys, let's try to slice into this tomato without touching it. I do have it flipped upside down to stop it from spinning around. Because I think I'm going to have to come across this way. Uh, let's give it a go here. Let's see if I can get it to bite in. Hmm. Not bad. There we go. Woo! Oh, so disgustingly thin. Beautiful. It's really good practice. Again, I'm trying to get through it in one continuous cut here, but it's difficult. And that's why you want to try to get a longer blade if you can. So you can avoid that sawing motion. But man, is that able to cut really thin. Really thin. Move that back in the middle. Now I'm just cutting uneven, but yep, that works out. That works out just fine. Let's try one more. Go from heel. Yeah. Beautiful. Like butter. Well, 
let's try it on some fish. All right, guys, what I think I'm going to do here is try to cut this top portion off right across on the top here. Uh, let's see how that goes here. It's a really kind of weird shape. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's just going right through there. Okay. So now I have kind of a block to work off of there. And as an exercise of just evening off the block here, I'm just going to cut the sides off here so I can get a more even block. So I'm going to turn it this way, cut off this portion here. Turn it over this way, then I got this kind of um, blocky portion here. And we can get maybe like two good blocks from here. So maybe we'll go like... Sliding it right through there. Very nice. And again, we're just going to cube these, but now we have some nice blocks here. All right, let's cube them up here. Use this one, yeah. Okay, this one still can use, not too much sinew in this one. This one has a little bit too much, but maybe we can use it. But let's get this one blocked off here. Once again, guys, this has been the Tsujihiki Knife from M Custom Knives from Seki, Japan. If you wanted more information on this company, I will leave links in the description below. But if you want to get into making sashimi or sushi, you have to get a knife like this. It's a game changer. Stop using your chef knife. This is really going to make the results a lot better. It does cut through fish 
just like a hot knife through butter. It is absolutely incredible. Well, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one.